I finished building it, and it's working. So let's hear how this bad boy sounds. It also has a off and on switch now. First of all, the um, auxiliary, which is um, connected to this iPod here. Let's just turn that on and hear it. And select a good song. Volume control works. Let's play the record player. Oh my god, what on earth is this? Morning, apparently. And finally, tape one and tape two. Let's have them both playing at the same time. Got Rolling, Stone, no, Rolling Stones in here, I hope that's alright. I hope that's not protected under the stupid Warner music thing. Now, take two. Actually, I think this one's a parody of another Rolling Stones song. And of course, the song ends while I'm trying to do this demo. That's just typical, isn't it? You can make it if you try. And of course, you've got all the um, tape dubbing features, they all work. What's the input selectors and everything. You may notice that these lights go out when the um, tape dubbing is on. So another little feature that I've added to this, because it will not, um, when it's tape dubbing, it's not taking the input from these. So that's why I made those lights go out. But as soon as I take it out of tape dubbing mode, see the light comes back on. It even remembers what position it was in. I'll put tape dubbing on again. And turn it off. You can see that. So I'm really pleased with myself. All I've got to do now is do some, get some better speakers, because these don't really have much bass to them, even though they are ported and uh, built pretty well. Here is an inside shot of the amplifier. There's one of the amplifier kits I ordered there, and the other one there, you might just be able to see them. If I turn the camera's light on, it well, hasn't really made much difference, but... Although it looks a bit all higgledy piggledy and not all that tidy in there, it does work, and it does work well. I've also added a heatsink onto the relay transistor because just to be absolutely better safe than sorry. These are the two transistors. You may just be able to make that out that power the amplifiers. This is the other side of the heatsink. And you may be able to see that I've put plastic sleeves where the transistor pins are. Put plastic sleeves around the transistor pins so they don't short out on the heatsink. I don't know if you can make any sense of it, but this is the schematic for the um, relay circuitry. I have done a full talk through of this circuit, but it, um, but it came out so long that it's just um, too long to add to this video, so I'll probably do that in another video. I'm just giving you a look at it. And here's the schematic for the power supply. I'll just give you a close-up of it. There's the main transformer. The bridge rectifier. And the smoothing capacitor. And here are the two transistors that give power to the amplifier circuits. 
That's not a split rail power, that's just two single rails with a central ground. And here is the transistor for the diodes. That gives out a slightly higher voltage because as most of the diodes on there are connected via I mean relays as most of the relays there are connected via diodes they um I don't want the voltage drop across the diodes to be so low that it isn't able to switch the relays now that's the schematic for the power supply this is the schematic for the um, amplifier kits that I got you can see I've penciled in the values of all the components because they are not mentioned there they are mentioned in the parts list I can just show you there's the parts list and there is the schematic you may remember this well this is the improvements I made to the um, circuit that used the LM303 now this did work when I had it all done with point to point wiring this bit here is not actually connected to the speaker this one ohm resistor and this 100 nanofarad capacitor that is actually earthed connected to the earth it is not connected to the speaker there but that's just um made a little mistake there so it looks like it's connected to the speaker but it in fact isn't and here is one of the amplifiers that i made using the lm383 amplifier chip now when i had them made with the point to point wiring they um they worked but when i put them onto the vero board i just got weird noises out of them i don't know why there's nothing shorted out and uh nothing open but yeah I did put a heat sink on it but um I've taken that off now for use in something else now I'm going to show you a little bit of proof that it did work when it um when I had it just connected with the point-to-point -point wiring well good news everybody wonderful news check this out <laughs> Hear that? I finally made a working circuit with an LM383 power amp. Well, here are the two amplifier kits that arrived today, ready to be assembled. And here is the ridiculous amount of packaging they came in, in the bin. Now you can see all the parts a little bit better. So I'm now going to make these and put them in my amplifier. Well, here it is, all built. It does have one little problem though. I'll just turn it on. It does seem to be a little bit of hum in the thing, and when I select any of the other inputs, there's more. But I know what the problem is, and all it is is that the capacitor I've used here on the power supply is just not strong enough, so I'm just going to replace that and that will fix the problem. But as you can tell, that's not a problem anymore. I fixed the hum, and it now sounds really good. Getting a nice full sound out of this thing, although you can't, um, doesn't really sound very good at the moment because I'm using a pair of headphones as a microphone because my microphone has decided to stop working. I guess the next project will be uh, making some better speakers. I've already got something in mind, I've already got something planned so that um, I might be doing that soon. The only thing I don't really like about this amplifier is that the the TDA 2003 chips that it uses are so sensitive, I only have to turn the volume up a little tiny bit and it, and it goes really loud. So anyway, that's just about it for me. Until next time, goodbye, and I'm going to leave you with some of the bits that didn't get in, so here goes. Always discharge your blurry capacitors before doing anything. And here are the two transistors that power the, uh... uh. Pardon me.